Good morning, students. Our topic for today is about the histology of the pituitary gland. The pituitary gland, or hypophysis, weighs about 0.5 grams in adults and has dimensions of about 10 by 13 by 6 millimeters. It lies below the brain in a small cavity on the sphenoid bone, which is called the cella torsica. The pituitary gland has dual origin. It has a neural component and an oral component. The neural component is the neurohypophyseal bud growing down from the floor of the future diencephalon as a stalk or infundibulum that remains attached to the brain. The oral component arises as an outpocketing of ectoderm from the roof of the primitive mouth and grows cranially forming a structure called the hypophyseal pouch or Rathke pouch. Therefore, because of the dual region of the pituitary gland, it actually consists of two glands, the posteriorly located neurohypophysis and the anteriorly located adenohypophysis. This is another picture showing the two parts of the pituitary gland which come from the two different embryologic regions. This is how the anterior lobe of the pituitary gland or adenohypophysis develops and this is how the posterior lobe of the pituitary gland or neurohypophysis develops. The two glands of the pituitary gland, the neurohypophysis and the adenohypophysis are anatomically united but since they arise from two different origins so they have different functions. Let us discuss the histology of adenohypophysis and neurohypophysis in detail. The neurohypophysis retains many histologic features of brain tissue. It has two parts, the pars nervosa which is the large part of the posterior pituitary gland and the infundibulum which is the small part attached to hypothalamus at the median eminence. The adenohypophysis which is derived from oral ectoderm, has three parts. First, the pars distalis, which is the most anterior and largest part of the adenohypophysis. Second, the pars tuberalis, which wraps around the infundibulum. And thirdly, the pars intermedia, which is thin and is adjacent to the posteriorly located pars nervosa. This slide shows a section of a pituitary gland. The adenohypophysis, since it is made up of cord of cuboidal cells with a wide range of nuclear to cytoplasmic volume ratios, it appears darker looking. The neurohypophysis looks like a brain tissue and it is connected to the hypothalamus by the pituitary stalk. The neurohypophysis is lighter compared to adenohypophysis. Let us identify the specific parts. This is the pars nervosa. This is the infundibulum or pituitary stalk. This is pars distalis, pars tuberalis, and pars intermedia. This is the hypothalamus. This is another picture of the pituitary gland. The darker portion is the adenohypophysis. The lighter portion is the neurohypophysis. This is the pars nervosa. This is the infundibulum or pituitary stalk. This is pars distalis, pars tuberalis, and pars intermedia. Like what we mentioned earlier, there is connection and relationship between hypothalamus and pituitary gland. This is the hypothalamus and this is the pituitary gland. The hypothalamus has three regions. The anterior region, the middle region, and the posterior region. The anterior region is also known as supraoptic region. Important nuclei to remember and their corresponding hormones being released are supraoptic nucleus which produces vasopressin or antidiuretic hormone, paraventricular nucleus which produces oxytocin, tyrotropin releasing hormone, corticotropin releasing hormone, and somatostatin, and medial preoptic nucleus which produces gonadotropin-releasing hormone. 
these are the other nuclei of the anterior region. The middle region is also known as tuberal region. It contains arcuate nucleus which produces growth hormone releasing hormone. And these are the other nuclei of the middle region. The last region is posterior region, also known as mammillary region, which contains the following nuclei. The pituitary gland's neural connection to the brain and its blood supply are both of key importance for its function. Embryologically, anatomically, and functionally, the pituitary gland is connected to the hypothalamus at the base of the brain. In addition to the vascular portal system carrying small regulatory peptides from the hypothalamus to the adenohypophysis, a bundle of axons called the hypothalamic hypophyseal tract courses into the neurohypophysis from two important hypothalamic nuclei the supraoptic nucleus which synthesizes antidiuretic hormone or vasopressin and paraventricular nucleus which synthesizes oxytocin. Both hormones undergo axonal transport and accumulate temporarily in the axons of the hypothalamic hypophyseal tract before their release and uptake by capillaries branching from the inferior hypophyseal arteries. Again, I just want to emphasize that it is the hypothalamus that produces antidiuretic hormone and oxytocin. These two hormones will be transported to and stored in the posterior pituitary gland. The blood supply of the pituitary gland comes from the internal carotid artery. This internal carotid artery along its path gives branches to the pituitary gland, namely the superior hypophyseal arteries, which supply median eminence and infundibular stalk, and the inferior hypophyseal arteries, which provide blood mainly for the posterior pituitary gland. The superior arteries divide into a primary plexus of fenestrated capillaries that irrigate the stalk and median eminence. These capillaries then rejoin to form venules that branch again as a larger secondary capillary plexus in the adenohypophysis. These vessels make up the hypothalamic hypophyseal portal system that has great importance because it carries neuropeptides from the median eminence to the adenohypophysis where they either stimulate or inhibit hormone release by the anterior pituitary gland. And now, let us discuss the histology of anterior and posterior pituitary gland. Let us start with adenohypophysis or the anterior pituitary gland. Again, the three parts are the pars distalis, pars tuberalis, and pars intermedia. Let us discuss these three parts one by one. Pars distalis composed 75% of the anterior pituitary gland. It has thin fibrous capsule and the main component are cords of well-stained endocrine cells interspersed with fenestrated capillaries and supporting reticular connective tissue. This is another picture of a pituitary gland. This is the pars distalis. There are two types of cells in the pars distalis based on staining affinities of secretory granules. Chromophil if it takes up stains and chromophobe if it weakly takes up stains because it has few or no secretory granules. For chromophiles, there are two subtypes. First is basophils if it has affinity to basic dye, so they appear blue. And second is acidophils if it has affinity to acidic dye, so they appear orange-red. Basophilic cells include corticotropes which produce adrenocorticotropic hormone, gonadotropes which produce luteinizing hormone and follicle-stimulating hormone, and thyrotropes which is the least abundant which produce thyroid-stimulating hormone. 
On the other hand, acidophilic cells include somatotrophs, which is the most abundant and produce growth hormone, and lactotrophs, which produce prolactin. Chromophobe cells include stem cells, undifferentiated progenitor cells, and degranulated cells. Next part is the pars tuberalis, which is a smaller funnel-shaped region surrounding the infundibulum. So look for the infundibulum, and the gland enclosing the infundibulum is the pars tuberalis. Most cells found in pars tuberalis are gonadotrophs, which produce luteinizing hormone and follicle-stimulating hormone. This is another picture of pituitary gland. This is the pars distalis and this is the pars tuberalis, which surrounds the infundibulum. And the last part is the pars intermedia, which is a thin zone of basophilic cells between the pars distalis and pars nervosa. Histologic hallmark of this region is the presence of colloid field cysts. So if you are shown with a cut section of pituitary gland, the area with colloid field cyst is the pars intermedia. This is a cut section of pituitary gland. This is the anterior pituitary gland. This is the posterior pituitary gland. In between the two is the pars intermedia where you can find colloid field cysts. This picture just reveals us the relationship of hypothalamus and the pituitary gland. The hypothalamus produces releasing hormones or inhibiting hormones. So hormones from the hypothalamus stimulate or inhibit the release of hormones produced by the anterior pituitary gland. So TRH or thyrotropin releasing hormone stimulates the release of thyroid stimulating hormone or TSH. PRH or prolactin releasing hormone stimulates the release of prolactin. GNRH or gonadotropin releasing hormone stimulates release of follicle stimulating hormone and luteinizing hormone. CRH or corticotropin releasing hormone stimulates the release of adrenocorticotropic hormone. And GHRH or growth hormone releasing hormone which stimulates the release of growth hormone. The two inhibiting hormones are PIH or prolactin inhibiting hormone which inhibits the release of prolactin and GIH or growth hormone inhibiting hormone which inhibits the release of growth hormone. This is just a summary of the hormones produced by the hypothalamus and their corresponding functions. Please take note that hypothalamus also produces somatostatin which inhibits the release of both growth hormone and thyroid stimulating hormone and dopamine which inhibits the release of prolactin. This is a summary of the hormones produced by the anterior pituitary gland. We got growth hormone which stimulates growth in epiphyseal plates of long bones, prolactin which promotes milk secretion, follicle stimulating hormone which promotes ovarian follicle development and estrogen secretion in women and spermatogenesis in men. Luteinizing hormone which promotes ovarian follicle maturation and progesterone secretion in women and interstitial cell androgen secretion in men. Thyroid stimulating hormone which stimulates thyroid hormone synthesis, storage, and liberation. And adrenocorticotrophic hormone which stimulates secretion of adrenal cortex hormones. And now, let us discuss the posterior pituitary gland or neurohypophysis. The neurohypophysis or posterior pituitary gland has two parts. 
pars nervosa, and infundibular stalk. Unlike the anterior pituitary gland, posterior pituitary gland does not contain cells that produce hormones. So, posterior pituitary gland does not synthesize hormones. Posterior pituitary gland only stores and releases the two hormones produced by the hypothalamus, namely vasopressin or antidiuretic hormone and oxytocin. The neurohypophysis contains cells called pituitocytes, as pointed with blue arrows in the picture, which are highly branched glial cells that resemble astrocytes. Pituitocytes are the most abundant cell type in the neurohypophysis. If you remember in our discussion earlier, the nuclei in the hypothalamus, the supraoptic nucleus, which synthesizes antidiuretic hormone or vasopressin, and paraventricular nucleus, which synthesizes oxytocin, these two hormones are transported axonally into the pars nervosa and accumulate in axonal dilatations called neurosecretory bodies or herring bodies. These are the herring bodies. Under light microscopy, the neurosecretory bodies or herring bodies appear as faintly eosinophilic structures as pointed by blue arrows. These herring bodies contain membrane-enclosed granules containing either oxytocin, which is bound to carrier protein neurofysin 1, and antidiuretic hormone or vasopressin, which is bound to carrier protein neurofysin 2. This is another picture showing you the herring bodies as pointed by black arrows, which contain granules that either contain oxytocin or antidiuretic hormone. The antidiuretic hormone is released in response to increased blood tonicity as sensed by osmoreceptor cells in the hypothalamus. This results to antidiuretic hormone synthesis in supraoptic neurons and release to the circulation through the posterior pituitary gland. Oxytocin is a hormone that is quite important during childbirth because it stimulates contraction of myoepithelial cells of uterine smooth muscle during childbirth. In addition, it also stimulates contraction of alveoli and ducts in the mammary glands. And now, let's try to identify some structures. Identify the endocrine glands. If your answer is neurohypophysis or posterior pituitary gland for A, hypothalamus for B, and adenohypophysis or anterior pituitary gland for C, then you get everything right. How about this? Identify the specific parts. If you answer pars tuberalis for A, pars nervosa for B, pars intermedia for C, infundibulum for D, and parse distalis for E, then you get everything right. How about this? Identify the cells of the anterior pituitary gland. If you answer acidophilic cell for A, chromophobe for B, and basophilic cell for C, then you get everything right. And how about this? Identify the cell or structure. If you answer herring body for A and pituitocyte for B, then you got it right. And that's the end of our lecture.